Hey guys, got a video for you here that's going to show you how to make a network cable. We've got a couple of tools lined up here and some materials, and I'm going to go through what each one of them is used for. Okay, to begin with, we've got a short piece of uh, Cat5 cable. We've got a couple of boots, which are used to protect the connectors on the end from getting damaged. And we've got a couple of connectors, and I always bring extra because it never works out right the first time. So those are our materials. Over here on the right, we have our tools. We have a crimping tool, which is going to be used to attach this to the end of the cable. We've got wire cutters that are used to cut the cable. Notice the wire cutters are very flat, so it cuts the cable off evenly without cutting any things at an angle. And we've got a set of wire strippers here that is used to remove the outer uh, insulation from the wire. Over here on the left, we have a network tester, which we're gonna get to last, which is gonna tell us if we did everything right. So let's begin by taking our length of cable and we're going to strip back about one and a half to two inches. Each square here is an inch wide. So we're gonna strip back about an inch and a half to two inches. It's not a bad idea to strip a little extra more than you need. So that way you can always trim the cable off. If it's too short, you have to go back and strip the insulation back even further. So what we do is we put it the cable inside the jaws of the stripper and we rotate it around about one or two times and let go. You'll notice the little blade on the side has made a cut in the side of the cable which allows us to just pull off the outer insulation without damaging the interior insulation. You'll also notice this piece of fiber right here. This string is actually used to give it tensile strength when you're pulling this cable through walls and through ceilings. So we're just gonna cut that off if we can. Okay, so I went and got a pair of scissors to cut this uh, fab uh, to cut the string with to get it out of the way. The wire cutters don't always work. Next, we're going to peel back each of these pairs of wires. And this is why uh, Cat5 is called a twisted pair because each pair of wires is twisted together and then all four pairs of wires are twisted together. The whole reason for adding these twists is so that we can uh, reduce the amount of interference we get from the environment around us. So what we want to do is untwist these wires from each other back to the end of the yellow insulation. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And we just untwist each one. And as you know, you can get interference, any kind of electromagnetic interference from a variety of places, your microwave oven, from an airplane going by, even from solar flares. Now, once we have each of these wires separated from each other, we wanna straighten them out as well as possible. So we're just going to pull these out straight because as they have little kinks in them, it's gonna make it difficult to actually align them properly to put them inside of the terminator on the end. So we're going to straighten each one of these out and then our job is to put these in order and we're going to arrange them from left to right in a particular order that's going to make them line up in a correct order in this connector. The order for Cat5 for a cable this short can be one of two arrangements. And I'm just gonna choose one of the most common. We're gonna choose the white-orange. You'll notice the white-orange and the orange pair were together. So white-orange, then orange next to it. So from left to right, white-orange, orange. Then we're gonna find the green one here and bring it up next, white-orange, orange white green then we bring up blue then we bring up white blue and then the green and then white brown and brown so this is the arrangement you're looking for white orange orange white green blue white blue green white brown brown now the trick at this point is to keep them in this order, but to bring them together so that they're laying flat. Right now they won't go into the connector, but once we get them all straightened out and together, they'll fit inside the connector or, the, or what we call the terminator at the end. Now at this point, 
If some of your wires get out of order, don't panic. We can put them back in order. Our main job now is to just get them to all lay side by side. You'll also notice that I'm pulling back the yellow insulation when I work it on this. You can grab a hold of this and push the insulation back up into it if you need to. So we've got that. Let's take a close look at that. We've got white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. Okay, they're in the right order. They're all laying side by side. Now, what we need to do is apply a connector to this, but the connector has an area, and I'll show you with the other end of the wire, where the insulator is going to go to a certain point and stop, which looks about like that. You can actually see where the connector steps up a little higher here, and that's how far the yellow insulation goes. The exposed wires on the end will actually need to go all the way to the very end. That means that if I take my arranged wires here, and if I put a connector next to it, I want the insulator to stop right about here, and the wires themselves should stop right about here. Now, once I know how far I'm going to cut off the wires, I can then take my flat wire cutters, and notice that I'm using a flat pair so I don't cut things off at an angle. I'm literally giving my wires a flat top, and I cut them off. I set those aside. Now you see why we stripped the insulation back as far as we did, because we can throw away a little bit of wire. If we had a problem with the insulation being too far up, we would have to cut it back, which of course would mess up our arrangement here. Now, once we know that we have everything in just the right position, we grab a wiring connector, we slide it into the end of the wiring connector with the white orange on the left side and this little tab here pointed away from us so that we can see all the teeth on the connector. So we're going to take this we're going to slide it up in here and we're going to note that the yellow insulator stops right about here on our connector where this step is and that if we turn it to the side we can see that the wires have gone all the way to the very tip. So once we've done that we are not ready to crimp this on. We need to look very carefully again at the order white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. Once we're absolutely sure that they're in the right order and that the wires have gone all the way to the very tip of this connector, then we pick up the RJ45 crimp tool. In case you were wondering, this is an RJ45 connector and this is a crimp tool for crimping it on here permanently. In the end of it, you'll see a place to put the connector in with the tab going down. So we're going to take this, slide it into the end of the connector until it seats as far as it will go. Make sure the wire is pushed in tightly and then squeeze the crimp connector down and crimp it down tightly. I always release it and then crimp it down a second time before pulling it out and checking my work. It's always good to make sure that you've crimped it fully, otherwise it might not make a good connection and it might not test out well. So we're gonna come back in just a moment after I put the other connector on here and I'm gonna show you how to test it. Okay, so I got my second connector attached and one thing I wanna show you is if you put the two connectors side by side with the tips of them going this way and the clips on the back side away from you, you'll notice that it's the exact same pattern from left to right. White, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. And it's the same pattern over here, assuming you did everything right. So once you're done and you have both connectors on, and I realized I forgot to put my boots on, we'll fix that blooper in post take. Uh, in edits. So once I have my both my connectors on, 
I'm going to connect one end of it, doesn't matter which, into this terminator for the, for the tester. And I'm going to put the other end into this connector here. And then I'm going to turn on the tester. I'm going to make sure that it's selected to auto test and that it's going to test for 1000 megabits, 100 megabits, and 10 megabits, and in this case, voice over IP speeds. Once I know that it's ready to test, I press the test button, it runs for a moment, and it tells me how well it tested out. You'll notice in this case, I deliberately did it incorrectly so that all, all the tests fail. What that means is, is I've got something wrong somewhere on my cable. Either my wires are out of order, or perhaps they're not properly seated into the test connector, or something. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to retest everything one more time by exiting out, press test again, and you'll see that it's failing all the tests. So what that means is, is I have to take my cable, I have to inspect the cable to see for a variety of things. Do my wires go all the way to the end of the connector on both of them? And I check both sides and look, do they go all the way in there? Second, are the wires in the right order? If they're not in the right order, it won't test out correctly. So what I need to do is establish that, oh, this connector is wrong. So what I do is I cut it off cut that little wire inside it, and I start over again from scratch. And I repeat the process. Now's a good time to point out that I should have included my little boots onto my wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide one of these on here like this. And that goes over it to protect this little clip from being torn off. And before I replace my connector, I'm going to take this and slide it on there and put it way down at the other end, backwards from the other one, so that I can slide it up once I've replaced this cap. Now, you might be wondering what we do with this. We throw it in the trash. It's no longer good. These are only one use. So, I'm gonna repeat the process. Again, stripping, arranging, placing the terminator on it, and crimping it on, and then using the tester to see if everything's working. Once you get a good result on everything, then you know that you have completed your cable and you can uh, have one of the TAs test it for you. There you go.